Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Good morning out there, Hello Self podcast fans. I'm so glad you're in, you're joining us today because have I got a treat for you. The mission of this program is to turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans because I want you to get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf and start manifesting now. You know that I believe that in every story, there are lots of gifts and many glories. And today you're getting a gift. I My guest is Andrew Jacob Brown. And you'll learn more about him as you stay tuned as we have a conversation here about his happenings, because he will give you some tips and ideas about what Hello Self moments helped him take the plunge into the work that he's in today. So I will give, I will, Andrew, say hello to my audience. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? Thank you, Patricia. I'm honored. Yeah. Well, Very honored to be here. It's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> That's <laughs> quite the it, intro, by the way. It's it's, quite the intro. <laughs> That's great. But anyway, you saw him. That's him. <laughs> and so I'm going to give you a little bio that he has shared with me. And then I'll let Andrew tell you the real story. And we'll talk back and forth. You know me, I can't keep my mouth shut. But I wanted to tell you how we met. We were at a film event. Film mix- yeah. Film, a film mix- what? Film mixer. Yeah, okay. Like It's like a festival almost. It's kind of a festival. See, he's got all the magic words. But anyway, (laughs) a mutual friend introduced us and said, Patricia, you have got to get this man on your podcast. This is how it happens. We run into people and we like what they can offer and we just like them. And you're going to enjoy today. Let me start with uh, the bio that uh, he has shared with me. And then, like I said, I'll turn it over to Andrew and he can tell you the real story. Andrew Jacob Brown began studying the craft of writing in 2007 and went on to write his first novel, Haven, The Fate of the Four Races, in 2012, which soon went on to win two book festival awards in the same year. But it was his love for movies and the Bible that inspired him to learn the craft of screenwriting. In 2013-2014, he won two straight contest awards with his script in deep, in depth, Deep in debt, deep. Oh, we both is that sometimes in debt, deep. deep. And the script was option. In 2016, he made his first short film, Mariah, which was a gold winner in the 2017 Neo Noir Film Festival. Then in 2018, Andrew changed his focus to acting and producing. And with his years of writing and martial arts <laughs> experience, he created six action dramas in five years and achieved 10 Best Actor Awards. And on the personal side, Andrew resides in Huntsville, Alabama with his wife. Now, I've given you what he's written in his bio, (laughs) and I'm going to turn it over him to tell the real story. Andrew, start wherever you want to, where you were born or anything. Just give us what brought you to this moment in your life. Wow. I'll be honest. I haven't read that bio in a while. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, that's so to the, hear that, that's, that's hear that out loud. We get to learn about ourselves. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think that we get caught up working so much that we don't get a chance to go back and actually see what we've done mm-hmm. and to take note and and go, hey, look how blessed you've been. Like you read about that novel. It said my first novel, actually it's my only novel. I haven't read any more novels after that, but that experience did teach me a lot. Writing actually taught me a lot. It taught, It gave me a great foundation for the film industry because it's all about story. And whether you're an actor, a uh, cinematographer, d- director, it doesn't matter what you do in the industry, story writing is super important. And so I'm just very blessed and grateful and I'm grateful, I should say, that I started there, that I started with the writing mm-hmm. aspect. Mm-hmm. And my story is very odd. Um, hello, self moment. You want to talk about hello, self moment. I got lots of them. But to keep things short, I re- I recognized probably in my teenager, teenage years that I was a creative. And so once I realized I was a creative, it helped me go down that path, which is a very hard path. Being a creative today, being an artist, it doesn't matter what kind of artistry you do. It's really hard. It's very difficult. It's hard to make money at. It's hard to have it make a career at. And I think most of us are <laughs> fooling ourselves if, if we seem like we all got it together, but because we don't. And But I started out playing basketball and I started out a martial artist. And that was my first love really were those two things i was more of a physical artist i did things on the physical so basketball martial arts and i did those for years i tried to pursue pro basketball for a long time i was trying out for aba teams and most people don't know that about me but i did that till i was about 30 and i realized hey and that was a personal goal i made for myself i'll try until i'm 30 and if i don't make it then i'm done try something new and i'm 44 now if everybody wants to know how old i am but martial arts I did since I was 12 years old. And so I just kept on that path and tried different martial arts, got a couple of black belts. I ended up teaching out of my garage for a while. And, but the writing started in my mid twenties and that was a great creative outlet for me. And if you know anything about me, I did not write in high school. English was not my subject, but storytelling, that was something different. And I was fortunate to start out wanting to write a novel, which is crazy because I've always been a movie guy. This is what doesn't make sense with me. I was a movie guy. So to say, hey, I'm going to make up a I'm going to make up a, a, a book. And it, it, I had all this time on my hand and I was like, I'm just going to write a book. And I started writing the story and, and I wrote 400 pages. Wow. It didn't take me long to realize I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I, there's a series called the Left Behind series, and uh, I don't. Uh, a lot most people know what it is, but it's the number one selling book series in the world. It had like 13 books or something like that, and they started, I think, the late 90s. And I read all these books, and when I wrote, read all those books, I was so excited that I wanted to write my own book, and I did. But then I realized, man, I don't know anything about writing. And here's how I know that. I actually found the author, Jerry Jenkins, who's the author of the Left Behind series, who's also the father of Dallas Jenkins. For you fans out there that know The Chosen, Dallas Jenkins is the director of The Chosen. But his father, Jerry, uh, I, you know, he was more of my kind of hero growing up. And, and I got him on email and I said, hey, Mr. Jerry, could you read my work? I'm trying to get published and I can't get anybody to pick up my book. And, and this is what he said. He said, send me your first five pages. So I sent him my first five pages and he just destroyed me. He just, he critiqued everything I did and it was, it needed to happen. And I didn't know what I was doing. There was a lot of mistakes I was making. And so that's what made me realize, hey, you need to go back and learn how to write. So I bought a lot of books. I bought these great fiction series books, learning description, plot. Wait. May I interrupt just a moment? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Anytime you want. Yeah, because I don't want you to lose that thought. But I don't want our audience to miss what you're saying either. Because, look, he did not start out. He was a sports enthusiast. Now, what does (laughs) sports teach in martial arts? It teaches Mm -hmm. discipline. My son was a is a black belt too. And he went through all of that with uh, his instructor. And I think that 
those kind of things, whatever you might have done mm-hmm. along the way. The second thing, he got into sports and gave himself a deadline, said, if I don't reach this. So it doesn't mean that you have to plan out your whole life, but yeah. you have to have some idea. And this is to the audience. And I love the moments that you're sharing here. <laughs> And then the the another thing that really stood out for me is that when he wrote his book and then he read the series of Left Behind, he actually reached out to get feedback. That's the only way we're going to learn is to step out and be brave enough and vulnerable enough to allow somebody to guide us along the way. So don't forget these steps. Don't be afraid to call somebody and say, could you help me? These are things that we throw stuff in our closet and our dreams and goals on that someday shelf because we're too afraid to step out. So listen to what Andrew Jacob Brown is telling you. These are moments that can change your life. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to interrupt no. till the next time. <laughs> you know what? Listen, I'm glad you said that because I have a tendency of kind of staying on that path of a long story. I don't want to do that. But, no, I like it. I but like no, it. Here, I know you do, but I'm glad you brought that up because it means where I'm going, anyways. Is you de- uh, we have we live in a day where it's hard where people just think they know everything. <laughs> um, they, they don't want to learn anything. Uh, hey, I'm going to be an actor. I'm an actor, so they just say I'm an actor. Yep. On social media and say I'm an actor. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Are you learning? Are you are you studying acting? Are you are you really trying to be a better actor? I, there's, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a difference between having ambition and actually going through the failures and learning and asking questions and trying to be better and the training. And let me go on top of that. When you said martial arts, it taught me everything in life for me. I actually instill everything I learned from martial arts into filmmaking. You took the words out of my mouth without me having to say it, but I'm saying it again anyways. It really did. The discipline behind martial arts to be focused, to be driven, to be still at times, it, there's a discipline there and a drive that I had with martial arts. And yes. it taught me technique, how to do things correctly, how to not get ahead of yourself. And so that book story I was telling you, that taught me a lot of saying, hey, you need to go back to the drawing board. Go back to what you know how to do. Learn the learn the basics. And so when I did that, I was starting to go into, I started learning all the, reading all these books and studying the, the craft of writing. Now, here's what's interesting. I'm a movie guy. I've always been a movie guy. When I was a kid, I didn't have a father growing up. So my mom worked two, three, sometimes jobs, two, three jobs. And I just watched a lot of TV, a lot of movies. Now, whether that's a good thing, I don't know. But what it did is it made me a love, it gave me a love for storytelling characters. And I loved it. But I was always a TV guy and I never read books. Okay, so I, I have read- to stop again. I have to, I oh my God. Books. You're giving so the thing. Hey, this is just the beginning. I haven't even gotten into it yet, but go ahead. <laughs> We'll have to schedule another one. But he, uh, oh, so many things that I do not want you to miss. He is talking about what he did as a child. And sometimes we look at those hello self moments. As we look back now that there were hello self moments, we think, oh, I had such a bad life. My mother was gone all the time and I was sitting in front. No, it was this foundation for him to start to think like a filmmaker because he sat there and watched those movies. We don't give credit to those magic moments that happened in our lives because we're too busy talking about ain't that awful. No. Find the magic in each moment is going, yeah. And I I don't want to, I love what you're saying. I'm so excited myself. Okay, so audience, I want you to pay attention. (laughs) (laughs) So with with the book thing, let me just say this. It I'm I don't novel writing is not my natural gifting, meaning there's a lot of description that goes into novel writing, a lot of detail oriented things. And I'm not. 
Now, here's what the Lord did with me. I took this journey of a, a good, it took me five years to get this novel going. And then once I did, I realized, man, this, is, this really isn't my natural gifting. But here's what happened. I decided to take this novel and make a screenplay out of it. Now, what this taught me was, if you've ever seen a movie that had been adapted, or excuse me, a, a book that had been adapted into a movie, mm-hmm. and, and people have read the book, they always say, man, the book's better. There's a reason why it's better. Because you're only getting about 25% of the story in the movie. They have to cut so much, yeah, right? That's true. Yeah, they do. And so with the movie, where was I going with that? I tried to convert the script, or excuse me, the, the, my book into a script, and it failed. I couldn't do it. It was too hard. It, it just, I cut so much. So then I realized, you know what? I don't know what it is about screenwriting, but I feel like this is easier for me. So I wrote a fresh screenplay, In Debt Deep. That's the one you read in the, bio, the biography. In Debt Deep. Simple story about a a woman MMA fighter and her journey to help redeem a relationship with her niece. And it won two back-to-back awards, the World Series of Screenwriting. It it, it won an award in the 2014 Nashville Film Festival. And I was like, man. And then I optioned the script, which never got made, but I optioned it. And here's what I realized. I felt like I was cheating. But I wasn't cheating. I just I spent all this time learning novel writing. By the time I switched over to screenwriting, it became easy to me because you have to use less words. You have to be less detail oriented. And I took all the structure and poured it into screenwriting. And that's when I realized this is my gift. So that's when I, I got into acting and I picked up a camera and I started taking again everything I learned in martial arts discipline and learning the craft of each thing. So writing, filmmaking, producing, hiring people, directing, started acting. I had a lot of my first couple films. I had volunteer actors because I had to work on my craft. And then when I was ready, the last two or three films that I've done, I started hiring professional actors and we started getting better and better, bigger production. And that's how I've been able to build. It's what's that old phrase? It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Is that right? Yeah, it's time. not the, exactly. You don't it's get it overnight. Yeah. And that's the thing. Everybody wants everything overnight. They want to be an actor and they're like, oh, I want to be on TV. And it's not as glamorous as you think. It, it takes a lot of time to get there. I'm still trying to get there, right? Like you, you set goals for yourself and you take the long game. And I, I believe in the long. I think there's something here about it. And I think some of the greatest successful people that we may esteem in life, whether you're you like Michael Jordan or sports people, stuff like that. Bruce Lee growing up, I was a Bruce Lee. So these people that we esteem, I think every single one of them, if you go back and look at their story, they failed a lot. They stumbled, they failed, and it didn't happen overnight most of the time. And one thing, oh gosh, I keep interrupting. (laughs) No, actually, it's a perfect time to interrupt. Go for it. (laughs) But I love, he, Andrew just said, we fail a lot of times. Now, what I am learning, and I used to be tough on Patricia Leonard because she would, I'm a creative, so I just jump in. And when I was in corporate America, I, the structure didn't bother me. If I had something I wanted to do, I would pass the VP and go to the president because the VP said, oh, no, we've got this. We, But so that's the way I've always been. Sometimes it got me in trouble. Sometimes it got me what I wanted. But there is no such thing as failing. Yeah. And, and I don't want you all to say to give up when you get to the point of saying that you're failing because you are not. You have learned something. And you pick it up from there. What did I learn about that can help? And you have already said it, but we're, we still use the words. This is the thing that well, I, I don't like where we are in our society today. We let words create our mission. We let words create everything about our lives. Just like you mentioned earlier, and I love this a lot. So people introduce, I'm an actress. So what they do is they hide behind titles. And I found this in corporate America. The president was just the same person that got up and put his or her pants on the morning as 
Andrew and I do. And I found that out because, and look, he went to somebody that was very successful. So if we get out of that language that says, oh my gosh, I couldn't go to them, or I failed and it'll never, no, get out of the language and know because you'll never hit a home run unless you get up to bat. So get up and bat is what yeah. Andrew is saying, regardless. Yeah, I want to say- Interrupting so, me. I would say, no, no, you're good. I would say fail, right? And fail often. But listen, the, the failure, like you're saying, it's not you're a loser. No. Failure, hey, you're a loser. It just, you have to go through the stumbling blocks. You have to go through that to make you stronger, to make you better, to make you smarter. It's part of the process. It's, it's yeah, not- look what COVID-19 did. It, put, it yeah. made us stay at home with our families and we're closer to our families. It stopped everything and now we're reinventing ourselves. But, yes, but, but listen, it's perspective is where I'm trying to go with this. Yeah. I heard the old saying, like Thomas Edison, been in the light bulb. Uh, and I don't ask, don't talk to me about history because I'm not, a, I love history, but I don't know all the, but here's yeah, the thing. Me either. Was it 500 <laughs> times? Was it 500 times? Uh, if you guys can correct me on, if you're It doesn't but, matter. It was a but, lot. But, but if he said something like, I, I didn't fail 500 times. I found 500 things that didn't work. <laughs> so it's until he figured out what worked. That's when he, and, and that's the way you got to look at it. It's yes. failure is a good thing. It's a good thing. If you were just to, to say, hey, I, you know what? I think I'm going to be an actor today. Hey, look, an audition. I'm going to apply. Boom, I nailed the role. All right, success. You're never going to learn anything. You're going to, you're going to fall hard when you do. And then you're not going to know how to handle it. You're going to get hit with depression, whatever. I, yeah, no, but great the thing point. Is, failure is a good thing. You have to have it, but it's all about perspective of what failure is. Yes, yes loser. very good. So anyways, I wanted to elaborate on that. That's important. Yeah. You just wanted to get the last word. Hey, are we a team <laughs> or not? <laughs> oh, no. I'm kidding. I know you are. I love you. <laughs> oh, my love God. You've got some things coming up, and I want to hear a little bit more about sure. what's sure. ahead. Okay. All right. That you want to share. Yeah, you did mention, you mentioned the bio, I had six features. So I made six feature films and I've been saying, where do I want to go? The After Series. I'm just going to say it, The After Series. So After is a series that I'm creating, a TV ser a series that I'm creating. It is a faith-based TV series. Left Behind, see, that kind of went full circle. Um, and that's what's interesting about my story which actually applies right into not getting your success overnight. You take the long game. So anyways, I'm doing this after series and it's based off a movie that I made already. It's called Before It Happened. Oh. Before It Happened is a simple feature film about a detective who is caught up in his work and he gets suspended. And then he's given a task to go find his ex-partner and who had ran away. And his ex-partner is the lieutenant. His, or his ex-partner, his brother is the lieutenant and his lieutenant is telling him, hey, I need you to go find my brother because I'm dying of cancer and I need to, oh. so I need to talk to him. And so this detective goes and finds his partner and he finds out he's in all sorts of trouble and they go on this journey. And then at the end, there is a cataclysmic event that happens. And so the end times is like a backdrop, the biblical end times of this story. And I had gotten so many great reviews on this little tiny film that I made. And it is tiny. The budget is so tiny on it. And um, we, but we've been able to get distribution on it on a lot of AVOD channels like Tubi and the Roku channel, even Amazon, but it is on YouTube right now. And we got over 630,000 views on this little tiny film. And the, and these comments were coming in and they're like, man, this is insane. I've never seen anything like this. And I don't want to give it away because the story of before it happened, it, it was made to distract the audience, making you think the story is about a, a certain thing. And in the end, it gets summed up. And then I smack them with a cataclysmic event. And they're like, what is this? But yet it had been hinted throughout the story. And so what I thought I would do is make a series based off that and keep the story going. 
And I got a lot of people saying, you got to do this. You got to do this. And this has been in the work for two years, the series called After. So there's before it happened, the movie, and then after. And that's what I've been pushing. We are working on getting funding. We have a Facebook YouTube channel. We have a Facebook, or excuse me, a, a YouTube channel, After Series YouTube channel. And then we have a After Series Facebook page. That's what I meant to say. And we're we're driving traffic there. I've been making videos on how I'm going to cast because I do things structurally. I, I'm very good at that. As a producer, I learned that I don't get people in an uproar for no reason. There's a lot of that goes on Facebook where people say, I'm making a movie, I'm making a movie. And then they put a poster up and everybody gets excited and they all go, I want to get casted. And really, there's no money there. I'm, I don't do that. I Everything that I do is real. And I only post things if it's real. And I only... And if I say I'm going to do something, I have a 99% rate that it's going to happen. And I don't say that out of arrogance. I say that out of just confidence. That's what I do. And I want to be a man of my word. And I want my yes to be yes and my no to be no. And so that's how I approach the things that I do. But the after series is what I have coming up. And I do encourage people to get on there and follow. I think we have about 2,300 followers at the moment on the Facebook page. But we are definitely plugging away. And any day... We could get funding. We're we're getting close. Here's a spoiler alert. I'll say it right here on this channel. First time you really, I have an online store that is coming up for merchandise. So people will be able to get on there and order after t-shirts, sweaters. And that money that people purchase a shirt will go towards the series. So we have, it'll raise money that way as well. By the way, if, you sell, if we sell 2,700 t-shirts, That'll almost green light our series. Uh, it'll give us the rest of the money that we need. So, anyways, I'm getting a little heads Great up. Great idea. There, but... <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah. 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 We want to, we're we're all passionate, me and my team, and we are passionate about this in this after series. So that's the next journey for me is going in the the TV series. We have eight episodes written. They are all copyrighted. We are all ready to go. As soon as we get greenlit, we will be casting and we'll get locations and we'll be going through that. But that's what's next on the horizon mm -hmm. for us. Is it difficult to get funding for a series? Oh, it's difficult to get funding for anything. Absolutely. And you know what? And I will say this. I did a video on this. Somebody asked me about it. They said, how do you get funding? How do you get funding? And I was like, <laughs> that's the question everybody wants to know. Right. I will give you gold for all you artists out there that are listening. Uh, there's that chicken and egg scenario where if you get somebody with name talent, you can use them to get funding, but that's hard is to do that. Here's the thing to get funding. And I've only done it on a low budget level. Yeah. I would say 20,000 and less. This one's going to be a lot bigger budget. So we're going to have a harder time, but God has opened doors and I can't talk about that yet, no. but here's the thing. Do not, the best advice I can give and I, I say this in my video, is do not try to get people to invest in your project. You want to try to get people to invest in you. That's what they're going to invest in. Now, yes, your project matters. Your story matters because they are going to be attracted to your story. Like, for instance, mine's a faith-based story. Some people may not be faith-based at all. They may be atheists. I don't know. But they're going to invest in you. And if they're excited about you and they see your hard work, in your drive, in your passion, and you're showing it, and you are, and they're interested, you're going to have a higher chance of somebody giving you the money because that happened to me. My first film, that's what happened. Piercing Wounds, that happened. And then Within the Walls, same thing. And in fact, it was the same investor. And he didn't even, the second time around, I probably shouldn't be saying this, he didn't even care what the story was about. He just trusted me at that point. And I'm like, that was a relationship that I built. There's a bit of gold for you. It, it's it, You can't just go to people and say, hey, can I get some money for my film? Sure. That doesn't happen. But if you if you do meet somebody and you, you get connected with them and they are interested, share with them about you and, and get them to invest in you. You may have something in common with them. Who knows? But yeah. that's my tidbit there about getting fun. Relationships are very important in life, period, aren't they, oh, huge. Andrew? Huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It just like that, that's been a flavor through your whole story today. I'm interested. You said that this was the faith based. I'm very much into 
As a matter of fact, I'm going to see this afternoon Sound of Hope. Mm. And yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Not the actress in that, but yes, I know the film. Yes. Mm -hmm. I I simply, those are the things that I'm following. And so I have a question for you. What is your, do you see that the movie making, even in Hollywood, is going, I don't know, but okay. Do you see that faith-based movies are what we're looking at now? It's really moving up the ladder. And why do you think that's happening? That's a trick question, and I'll tell you why. I will give you. You mentioned God several times. Yeah, I yeah, am yeah. Very. Yeah, faithful. I am a man. I am a man of faith, and I'm not, I have my Confound Productions shirt on. That's my production company. Yeah. I mean, let me say it this way. It was somewhere 2003 ish, four ish. The Kendrick brothers started to come about, and they, they did Flywheel, and then they did Facing the Giants, and then they started to make faith based films a little bit popular. And then we started to get in a little bit a few years later. Uh, the Irwin brothers are popular right now. They did mm -hmm. some, they did a movie called Mom's Night Out with Lon. And they started out a little early before they got in some of the bigger stuff they're doing now. And The Chosen came. The Chosen came and that series broke the mold and put a shock in Hollywood. Now, Hollywood started is starting to... They're struggling. Everybody's struggling, I should yes. say. It is, it's a deep discussion to go into because it's not one thing. Streaming changed things. That's one topic I could say. That changed a lot of things. We don't go into a blockbuster anymore and rent a movie. You used to pay the artist that way. I would go in, I would rent a movie, and I would watch the movie. Whether I liked it or not, we would rent it, watch it, rewind it maybe if it was VHS, take it back to the store, and that artist got paid. Now... A movie like Top Gun or Creed, these Hollywood movies, they go, they get out, they come out, they go to the theater. And those are the only movies people can afford to go to anymore because everybody is struggling. And then that movie is for free on Amazon Prime or whatever a couple months later. And I'm like, that's no fun. You're just, I pay the $10. Now, some people say that's not free because we pay $10 a month. Um, for subscription. Yeah, but you get an unlimited sea of movies. <laughs> the artist struggles to make money now. Um, and that could be a whole discussion. But yes, faith based. Let's go back to faith based. People started jumping on the bandwagon. And I'm going to say bandwagon because as a Christian, as a believer, it could be very tricky. I've seen as the chosen made it popular. And now I'm seeing. A lot of Hollywood actors saying, hey, we want in, we went in on this. And I'm not judging them or saying they're not Christians. I'm not no. saying. I'm just saying it's all of a sudden, hey, we can make money here. We can do something here. And it's hard to discern who's really doing that. Or not. And so uh, that is where I'm observing this. And I'm going. That's all we can do right now. I agree. Yeah. Is an yeah. be an observer. Yes. Yeah. I'm an observer. And, but I, I think that there's a lot of people that have a heart. They want to make stuff. Like Mel Gibson, he did The Passion. And that, yes. that was something that was really impacting before any of this went down. Yes. And he's, he hasn't changed. He's still he's making The Passion, too. He's one of my favorite actors growing up. So, he wrote the model, didn't he? He really <laughs> He no. kind of did something. Yeah, because... Jim Caviezel is another good guy doing things. and But I don't know these guys, but I, I just know that not just those guys. There's a whole bunch of people that are saying, hey, we can make money over here. And I don't really know who's really heart sincere about it. And so, it's not for us to judge. That's no, for them. Yes, no, right. the Lord's going to settle it and, and, yes, and it'll right. all come out in the wash, but... I guess to say is, yeah, faith-based films are popular. There is a niche model, but it's still, it's not a guarantee. If you make a faith-based film today or even a TV series, it doesn't mean you're going to, you're going to make money on it. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but there are some very popular faith-based movies that were right around two or $3 million and they lost. They went to the theaters and everything. They didn't make money. Mm -hmm. So it's a very hard market. And yeah, I could talk all day about that. But yeah, uh, it's very interesting. I go to Planet Fitness uh, to work out, and the 
people at the front desk are all young people. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, I really like to be around young people because I want to see what is happening at the base of our creation, recreation of mm -hmm. our society again. And I'm telling you, the image that we put out there in our society about those young people is not true. That they're lazy, that they don't have any purpose, that oh. I talk to them about meaningful things like we're talking about, and they're very deep. Yes, there is a segment of society we're still not reaching. However, we've got some great people. And it doesn't matter about your political affiliation, but mm -hmm. look at J.D. Vance, 39 years old, and now is going to be a vice president. So it all is about our own discipline and our own belief in ourselves. That's what Hello yeah. Self is about. It starts... Okay with us. And in I'm corporate so America, I remember Stephen Covey wrote a book that if you want to transform the world or an industry, start with where you just like you mentioned uh, people that years ago invented, start with yourself in doing something that can be rippling out. And that's what I love about you. You're uh -huh. creating things. No, Thank as you. I learn about you, you're creating things that can ripple out and change our society. And you're not looking at that from the money standpoint. Yes, we want to make money, you and your wife, but yeah. you're starting, I'm going to do this. And then somebody else sees that and says, if Andrew can do it, maybe I can, or maybe I should call Andrew and just talk to him. It's people, that's what Hello Self book is about. Is as a matter of fact, and not to run to run this, but yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. I'm a talker. But no, the Hello not. Self book is written in it's not chapter one, chapter two, it's frame one, frame two, frame three. And if you get to the end of the film that you're creating about your own life, then I give you an Oscar. So it's about what you're saying. I, I don't I just give you an Oscar award in the book, but it's about oh, what you're you. saying. We have to wake up to who we are and what we've got to offer the world and believe. And yeah. that's what you've said all day. And I love that. Oh <laughs> no. I would say I agree. And we all have some gifting or something yes. that we can do. And and I did want to touch on this because yes. it goes on what you're saying, but, and I, I had it in my mind to talk about it earlier, but I didn't get a chance to, but this is a great segue. So there is no right way to do something. What meaning now hear what I'm saying. Like everybody gets there a certain way in what, and I'm in business, right? So like some people, and I'm going to use the industry, right? So some people take an acting class and they go to acting school and then they, then they get in and. You could do it that way. Some people get an agent. Uh, some people become a PA on a set. Some people grew up in it. Nepotism, right? <laughs> some people go to film school. Some people write a script. There is no right way. And don't make the mistake to wow. say, hero did it. So I'm going to do it that way. You don't, you, there's no right way. Everybody's hardwired differently too. And, and the Lord can use whatever. Yes. So, so don't try to always compare yourself to somebody else. I, it's something I think we all got to learn. Like we, we see somebody doing something. We're like, why can't that be me? It could be, but that you don't, you may not get there like they did. They, they may have got there faster that you may never get there. Like that's the thing is there is no right way or right path. I guess is what I'm trying to say when it comes to the stuff that we're doing in the industry. And you I want to say it like, and oh, oh gosh, Andrew, I could talk to you forever, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you're young right. and you're encouraging uh, people too. But the whole thing is that we get caught up in. Yeah, I just remember when my son was in uh, school, I went to a, a teacher's conference and uh, he was the art teacher. And I remember he said, I've got some young kids. I, I think he was uh, eight years old, but we've got some young kids that they're really good artists. You know me. 
I said, so what is a good artist, professor? And he said, he was stumped. And I said, let me give you an example. If somebody draws a tree and they color it purple, is that a bad artist? He didn't know what to say. Because mm-hmm. we we end up thinking there's one way and there isn't. Just go out there. It doesn't matter wow. what color you paint the tree. That does not make you an artist or a success. And the, what makes you a success is what you've been saying is believing in yourself and moving forward, taking the next wow. step. Isn't it? I, I, I love what he said. You know how many famous people have been rejected? I Stallone, Sylvester Stallone, I watched his story and he's one of my guys that I watched and go, man, that, because I can relate to that. I, I was a writer too. And so it's, I see what he did, but when he was an actor, he got casted as a thug. He didn't talk right. Cause he had a slur. He didn't look the part and look what happened. He creates Rocky and all of a sudden the world wants him. That's just the way it is. Jeremy Lin is another one. He's a basketball player. I don't know if you've heard of the Lin Sanity. It's called Lin Sanity. It's a documentary on this NBA player. He was an Asian professional basketball player, but he was great in college, his high school, won the championship, all the way up till the NBA draft. But the thing was, is he didn't get drafted because he didn't look the part. But he kept going and he kept going. And he was also a man of faith. And his story is very inspiring because he got his opportunity. Because people got injured on the Knicks and all sorts of stuff happened. And it was almost like God's hand was on it. But mm-hmm. he gets a chance to play in the game and he just crushed it. Mm-hmm. And he went on this run of wins and they called it Lynn Sanity because it was insanity. <laughs> but he was another one that just didn't look the part. Nobody wanted him because he didn't look the part. And it's people don't really know what talent is sometimes even if it was right in front of them. No, I think we want to put everybody in a box because <laughs> absolutely. It's- Yeah. Instead of looking at someone as an individual, that's a struggle in our society today. You're an actress. Oh, you're an actor. You're a writer. No, I'm really more than that. I I write this. And then I met, no, they don't want that. Just give me this one thing so I can. (laughs) It's full of you. And I'm not, I'm like Shania Twain. I'm not impressed with titles. If somebody... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I if somebody that. says I'm the president of the company, I just stare at them. Yeah. If I say, now who are you? I'm the president of whatever. And I just stare at them. That you know doesn't what? mean Yeah. You, you, you this is so great we're talking about this this stuff cuz cuz if somebody's going to say you're not this and you're not that and maybe it might be true, but you the, I think with artists we have to learn what to listen to and what not to listen to. Jerry Jenkins, when I sent my stuff to him and he told me my stuff, I took an honest look at it and I was like, you know what? I am telling a lot here. I'm not showing. I got a lot to learn. That was honest feedback. And I've had other, when I started to figure out writing, I started to get a lot better at it. I was sending it to festival or a screenwriting contest and I would get feedback and I would get one feedback that would say, oh, your your character's not fleshed out enough. And I'd have to take an honest look at it and go, oh, well, is it? And then I would resubmit and then I'd get another one back. Oh, your characters are great, but the plot is this. And so you'll get something completely different from other people. It's subjective. So it is good to make discernment of if you got something, believe in it. Like Stan Lee, I, people know who Stan Lee is. He's a comic. He created, you know, he came up with the idea for Spider-Man and I'm not going to tell the story justice like he does, but he came up with the idea of Spider-Man and he goes in and he pitches Spider-Man. They go, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> Nobody's ever going to believe a guy wearing a spider suit and have a web. <laughs> this is retarded, dumb, whatever. And he went away and I, I can't remember how it goes, but he ended up getting this thing hyped up. I think he might've sold some. And the next thing they said, Hey, this, the same guys, the Spider-Man thing, man, this is great. I believed in it the entire time, you know? That's one of those things where it's you got to really know who you're listening to yeah. and who you're not listening to. It's, you know what? It's, if I ask for hard. I know. <laughs> but you have to filter what yes. may be negative, but you also got to be honest and, and at least take a look at it and say, you know what? Is my acting poor in that? Maybe it was. Maybe, maybe I was overacting. I don't know. 
Or maybe maybe my movie was garbage. I don't know. You well, know what you're saying, Andrew, that it does, yeah. if you... And I'm trying to encourage yeah, by saying... If you listen and then look at yourself, so it's looking back, hello, self, who are you yeah. really? Did you really? And so you have a conversation with yourself. Then you make the judgment. You don't automatically say, oh, my gosh, I, I, I don't think I'll ever do this because Joe said that was terrible. No. I, you know what I say? Next. <laughs> <laughs> Next. I want to hear the next, <laughs> but you're yeah. going to get a combination in, of feedbacks, I think, in life. And what you're saying is, look at the person, look at what you've done, and then make the judgment and Every, no, don't just automatically accept everything. Everyone's a critic. Yeah. Just know. Everyone's a critic. Yep. I okay. had this, on that Before It Happened movie, I you get you read some of the comments and they'll be like, this is great. It was so uplifting. You'll read another comment and they're like, he promotes violence. I don't promote violence. <laughs> so anyway, I won't go off on that. Oh, my God. You know what, Andrew? We could go on talking forever. And I hope we get the opportunity sometime. Anytime. That we're, Anytime. Yeah, yeah. That we're, maybe when your after comes out and you want to <laughs> share more, we could talk okay. about that. But for right sure. now, sure. you have been... Everything in your story has been so uplifting to me and I know to our audience because the audience comes here to learn and maybe make build relationships with the people. On I've had doctors, I've had winemakers, I've had uh, authors of books. It's just a combination of everything. And I think what you have added is... It's just beyond what no, most people it. would get in any webinar or seminar they would go to because oh. these are real life things. Hello, self moments are the thing that can change the trajectory of our lives. It's not about film. I've been a career coach for, oh my gosh, more than I want to say, oh, <laughs> more wow. than you are old. But oh, it's, no. the, it's the <laughs> same story. It's the same story. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a corporate career or what uh, I'm a sports fan, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So thank you so much. Is there any last thing that you would like to say to our audience before we sign off? Um, just a tip or any I, um, empowerment thing. You definitely got to have patience in any kind of artistry that you do. And you definitely got to put in the work. But those things don't guarantee you a success. I would say that. But, it, but I do believe in a scripture that's in Proverbs that says all hard work brings a profit. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that profit looks like, but it's guaranteed. And if you're a person of faith and you work hard and you have patience and you learn something, make sure you're always learning something. I, I, I can't, ex I'm going to go back to the very beginning when we started the podcast here, people, well, there's a lot of people that I see that they just self-proclaim. It's look, don't get ahead of the line. Start here, build your way up. I'm still building my way up. I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm very happy and I, and I keep working hard. So anyways, I guess that's what I would say is patience and put in the work. Believe, believe in yourself. You got something and you believe in it. Yeah, I would stick with it. Yeah. A lot of the greats did that. And on anything, I'm a nerd, so I, I watch a lot of stuff. I spend a lot of time studying from successful, even Steve Jobs, people like that. I didn't be a fan of Steve Jobs. Absolutely. You know, I, watched, I watched this story. I watched a movie on him. They had a couple of movies on him. And I was like, man, here's a guy that believed in what he had. If you believe in what you have and you have something, then then pour into it. And don't listen to some people that are going to say that's stupid. It's never going to work. If you think it, you have something and what's going to work and, and you believe in it, go for yes. it. Yes. Yes. Give it your best shot. Stallone had Rocky. He believed in it. Thank I have you. I believe yes. It. And after, don't forget, you're going to see more of after series coming out as <laughs> Andrew starts to put this out on. And, and you can check some of it out right now on Facebook and YouTube. Yes, ma'am. Please, please look it up. Facebook's yeah. our And we'll have this in for those of you who are listening. If you don't get it all. 
we'll have it in the podcast when we post it. So it'll be out there. Andrew Jacob (laughs) Brown, I am so grateful to number one, have met you at the film event. And number two, having this opportunity, I feel like that this is just the beginning of a long-term relationship. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And to our audience of Hello Self Podcast, I want to say thank you for being here and take these suggestions, tips, and ideas that Andrew Jacob Brown has given you. He's lived it. So he's not just writing a book about it. He's sharing his own life. So as always, thank you for being here. And remember, I am your host, Patricia Leonard, the host of Hello Self Podcast. And as I always say, when we're signing off, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe, and remember this, keep dreaming.